got a little small project that I want to work on today for SNS. These tool height adjusters or tool height stops for the multi fix tools that were given to me by Rene De Bruin. Uh, sent in by, he bought these from uh, Pee Wee Tools over in Germany. I had mentioned a few episodes back in SNS that I was hunting a couple of these for the boring bar holder here that was given to me by Philip Hackett which I've cleaned up and then I also had this tool holder here which I had shown that was over in my cabinet because the the tool height stop here was broken which I did a long time ago I broke it so I got it cleaned up and I already had the screws that went with this one so these are the original screws so actually I was going to mount this on the boring bar holder and I ran into a problem so we're going to rectify that today I'll show you what I'm going to do we got we're going to put this new tool right here to use that one I showed uh, last week 5c it's a 5c collet holder but I'll move the camera down here and give you a little better shot of what we're doing so what I have learned is these tapped holes are m7 by one so seven millimeter now whenever i got these tool height stops and adjusters these are made and they come with these screws here these are m6 by one so apparently this newer generation of multi-fix that's being made I believe they're they're being made by that company Pee Wee Tools. I, I read some literature on the the guy that owns that company, and he has contracted a company over in China to manufacture these tools to his specifications. So maybe I'm thinking that one of the changes he made was he switched from M7 here to an M6, and I think that's probably because the M7 is is a little bit harder to find. It's not really a standard everyday size that you deal with. Most tooling, most anything that you deal with is either going to be M6 or M8, and that's just kind of hearsay and a little experience myself too. So these ain't going to work, right? You know, they ain't the right size screws. And again, I already had these, so I just reuse those screws. All right, so I went down to my local hardware store, Reynolds Hardware here in Pensacola, and I was lucky enough that they had some of these. These are M7 by 1 hex head, just, you know, hex bolts. So I think we can use these and just make our own, our own screws. That's just going to be the easiest thing. It's just easier to, to use something like this than to try to just make the whole thing, you know, and thread it. I'd have to set the lathe up for metric threading. This will be easier. So I think what we'll do is just copy one of these. I'm going to go ahead and take one out so that you can see. That's what they look like right there. So the head won't be quite as thick, but I mean, it's it, that don't really matter. So what we'll do is we'll set these up in a collet, in the collet chuck on the lathe, and just turn it round. And then we'll set it up in the mill, and that's where this 5C collet chuck's gonna come in handy. And we'll just mill us a screwdriver slide on there to just kind of make these look like these right here. Now, the one other thing that I'm gonna have to do is these are drilled for M6, so they, I think they're like six and a half millimeters, so we need to drill those out. I've got those metric drill bits over there, so we can use those, and we'll drill those out. And we'll modify these so that we can mount this thing up to this boring bar holder. I also would place the, the bolts here. These are M10. These are the ones that originally come with it. And they usually get pretty wore out. So I just replaced it with some new socket head bolts. So let's go ahead and get this thing fixed up so that we can, we can put it to use closest collet that I have is a 930 seconds which is going to be about 20 thousandths bigger than the diameter of these these bolts here these measuring around 270 but I think it'll work we're going to give it a try here
I think that'll work. I'm gonna give this high speed tool a try and see how it cuts this bolt. So we're gonna turn it down to 10 millimeter on the OD. So it'll be about uh, you know, 390 thousandths. The peaks right now, the points there are measuring about 490. So we've got about 100 thousandths. Yeah, it seems soft enough. A little sharp tool will get the job done there. And I'm just going to use some calipers for measurements here. We've got about 40 to go. Use a chamfering tool to break the edges here. I uh, don't know if I'm going to make it in there. We're getting really close to that collet. No. Let me uh, I'll just use a file, I guess. Okay, let's see if it fits and then if it does, I'll go ahead and get the second one turned. Yeah, okay. And again, we still gotta, we gotta drill it out, so we'll do that in a little bit. All right, so we're set up over here in the mill, just got a couple parallels in here and just doing some very light clamping on this. It isn't. It isn't going to need much. And this is where it's really nice <clears throat> having this metric set of drill bits right here. These are some Norsemen. And I love this set. This was given to me by a viewer a while back. I've used them a few times. I really like how it's got the uh, inch decimal place on here too. So not only are you looking at a metric number, but I can look at it and know exactly what this is an inch. Because my mind reads an imperial. So that helps me out a lot. But I know that that is a six millimeter hole. I think it was drilled six and a half. Let's see. Yeah, six and a half, probably a little smidget over that, but we'll just line it up using that six and a half. There's our seven right there. So we'll use the seven to drill it. And we'll just kind of do all this by feel. Let's see here. I'll just go ahead and put it in there that way. I believe it's still centered from the last one. I'd already drilled that, that other one out. Yeah, okay. Just line it up there and then we'll put our 7 mil in there. Okay. One more. What I do is I just go side to side and then I go front to back just watching the, the two edges rub or push over and in this case there's really not much coming out so any offset that I'm that I'm out of alignment with with the hole the drill bit will just kind of follow that and I can see that it's trying to walk just a little bit so just making some adjustments on the fly and that's all there is to it So let's try our screws now. And 
and see if they fit. Look at that. Like they were machined for it. Alright, so next step, we'll go ahead and uh, break this little setup down. And we'll go ahead and put the little 5C fixture up here and get it indicated. Alright, so we're getting the, the 5C chuck set up there in the, in the, uh, the mill. And I want to try out this new tool that was given to me by my channel supporter, Edge Technology. This is the indicator holder, the shank mount indicator holder. And I've been wanting to give this thing a try. It's a nice little adjustable arm indicator holder. They've got the they've got the friction on the joints like preset. So you can adjust it, but it's not too tight and it's not too loose and ain't gonna move around on you. So it looks like we got a 3-8 shank there. You can put it in a collet, and we got the dovetail mount there on the end for test indicators. And you've also got the, the hole there for mounting other, other type indicators with like a lug mount or something like that. So we'll put it over there and we'll, we're going to mount up a test indicator. And we'll use this to sweep in, find our center of the 5C collet chuck over there. All right, we've already got the indicator holder in, the, in a 3 8 collet. So, and I've got my wrench here. you got to use a... 764 Allen to tighten up on the your indicator mount right here. So I'm going to use the best test today. And I think what we'll do is mount it like so. And you see the, the articulating arms here. You can just kind of swing this thing around for whatever whatever range you need and we'll put it about like that I'm gonna come down close and just kinda of watch the needle there we'll get it we'll get it a little close by sight like this first then we'll go on then down in there on our bore Okay, a little bit that way. I usually just make like small adjustments and watch that needle. I don't try to I don't try to get it all at one time. I just make it a little at the time and kind of catch up to where it needs to be. All right, so that's one and a half thou. That's like uh, that's about one and a half there. One and one. All right, we're gonna leave her. We're gonna leave it right there. I think that's good enough. So, I think this is pretty nice. I, I like it. I can see it's uh, gonna be useful around here, and I look forward to using it some more. So, I'll have the link on the on the, in the description box for this indicator holder right here if you're interested in that, and go check them out over at Edge Technology. All right, now I got this thing set up and we got it centered. You can kind of see, I'm going to move it here so you can see how the thing works. Whenever you look, raise it up, it releases. When you push it down, you see it squeezes it right there. When you push down, it's actually pushing this sleeve up against the taper, causing it to squeeze down. All right, so our screw, here's our original screw. And there's one of our new ones we're going to use. So it's about a sixteenth wide, 
for you metric guys, it's about one and a half millimeters wide. And then the depth of it is, I think, around 2.8 yeah, 2 millimeters deep. So we'll go about 100 thousandths deep on the, on the slot right there. Let's go ahead and drop one in there. I'm going to give it a nice push there. Now there's a set screw on this side and I'm almost positive that what that set screw is is a lock because it's a little bit springy feeling like it's just going to release itself. So I push it down so that it's tight then I'm going to go ahead and lock that set screw. I've already tried it and it keeps that lock down there. Alright, we're going to give the new Sony camera a try for this uh, this machining op right here. This is the first time that I've have used the the new Sony for a video. So I'm gonna I've got you set up on the Noga and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. So we're using the stock lens that's 50 millimeter and let me go ahead and make sure it's focused right there. Alright so that's a that's a pretty tight shot for me. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm using a 1 16th end mill. That's a, that's a do-all end mill that I found in my bin. So hopefully it'll work. And here we go. We just touched off. So I'm going to take some light cuts with this. We'll, let's try four cuts at 25 thousandths. Alright, so there's 25. Let's see what she does. I'll we'll probably just hand feed it. Let's go ahead and set up a power feed here. All right, we'll go another 25 and go back the other way. And there's our third cut. So far, all right, here's gonna be our final cut. That's a hundred thousandths deep. All right. So looking at the viewfinder, I may be just out of focus on there. I think I might need to adjust the uh, aperture also. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead and I'll I'll give it another trial on the on the second screw and see if we can make any improvements on the video there. All right, we got you in there one more time. Got zoomed in, and I think I got her focused best I can. Okay, I'm going to use the camera here too. There's our two new screws.
that one must have a little dust in the hole it's a little bit more snug there or, or it's rubbing the hole in the in the uh, adjuster here I think we got a winner here all right there we go looks nice there on the viewfinder all right I think we got success there finally putting these to use so thank you everybody that's been supporting me here you know Renee for uh, sending in the the brackets right here and Philip got a nice boring bar holder that we can finally use around here all right, guys, we'll see you later, okay?